Heavy rain has lashed Bengaluru through Wednesday night, flooding several arterial roads in the east, south and central parts of the city, including the IT zone of Bellandur. According to the Met Department, 59 millimetres of rainfall was recorded in the Raja Mahal Gutta Hali area of the northern part of the city. What's more, the Weather Office has now issued a yellow alert indicative of heavy rain which it says will continue for the next three days. Shrija joining us with the latest from Bengaluru. Shrija, what's the situation right now? What are we hearing in terms of uh, schools and offices today? Well, in fact, uh, heavy rains have pounded and battered uh, Bengaluru. A again, once again, exposing the bad uh, infrastructure in the city and what we do know is that especially a wall collapse has also been reported in Sheshadri Puram area where a metro retain a wall has collapsed leaving at least about four to five uh, cars and about uh, two we uh, bikes are uh, damaged and according to Karnataka State National Disaster Management Center as well they have also informed saying that Karnataka especially Bengaluru will receive uh, uh, you know heavy downpour for at least another uh, 48 hours and areas like on the eastern fringes of the city like the HAL Airport Road and Madhepura Zone. Now, these are certain areas, especially that witnessed and reported uh, rainfall anywhere between 60 to 80 mm of rain. This is most between 7.30 p.m. and midnight. And several of the areas, especially some of the arterial areas, had reported where heavy rains had crippled the Bengaluru roads as well, leaving uh, completely damaged. Some of the houses, especially in HSR layout, had also reported uh, where flooding water had entered inside their homes. So these were the scenes as far as yesterday is concerned. And once again, just about last month, we went on to see how, uh, you know, heavy rains brought to Bengaluru to its knees. And especially we went on to see the IT side of, uh, especially the uh, IT corridor like the Mahadevpura zone, the Belandur area and electronic city area. These were the certain city, you know, part of the city that was completely underwater. And this time again, when it received uh, rains, uh, especially the IT zone of Bellanzur also reported uh, inundation. And according to IMD, they say and a yellow alert has been issued, especially to the interior parts of Karnataka, including Bengaluru as well, which means these are certain uh, places that will receive a rainfall for at least in the next 48 hours. Shrija, thanks very much indeed for joining us with those details. And of course, we'll come back to you as the situation progresses. Malikarjun Kharge, a staunch Gandhi family loyalist, has become the Congress's first non-Gandhi president in 24 years. The 80-year-old succeeds Sonia Gandhi as uh, chief of the Congress. But the big question, with just 18 months left for the mega battle of 2024, the next parliamentary elections, can Kharge swing things around for the Congress? Grand old party's first non-Gandhi president of the 21st century taking over from Sonia Gandhi. 80-year-old Malikajan Karge won 88% of the valid votes. His challenger Sashi Tharoor 12% and was seen as the official Gandhi-backed candidate. Rahul Gandhi denies that but let the result slip before it was officially announced. My role, of course I cannot comment on Congress President's role, that is for Mr. Karge to comment on. I am very clear as far as my role is concerned. The Congress President will decide what my role is and how I am to be deployed. Karge is all set to take over as Congress President formally on the 26th of this month and reached out to Tarur and the Gandhis. Mere saati, Sri Shashi Tarur, ko bhi Sonia Jine 
पर्सनल सेक्रीफाइस कर तेईस वर्ष तक कांग्रेस पार्टी के अपने खून पसीने से सींचा है वाइल तरूर वॉज क्विक टू कंग्रेचुलेट मिस्टर कारगे जस्ट बिफोर द रिजल्ट हिस्स टीम कंप्लेन अबाउट द इरेगुलरिटीज इन उत्तर प्रदेश विच हैज द लार्जेस्ट नंबर ऑफ डेलीगेट्स बट दिस वॉज रिजेक्टेड बाई द इलेक्शन इन चार्ज वेन यू फाइंड योर सेल्फ प्लेइंग मैच ऑन एन अन इवन पिच एंड द बॉल बाउंसेज एंड टर्न ऑकवर्डली यू स्टिल हैव टू बैट एंड आई हैव बीन बैटिंग वी वर ओनली कंसर्न दैट दे शुड बी नो पिच टैंपरिंग और बॉल टैंपरिंग and i think that for the most part uh, we have no complaints of that score in any case as has been pointed out the result was pretty decisive so i think it would be uh, unfortunate to sort of blame conditions what happened has happened we have put forward the best account of ourselves that we could and clearly it wasn't good enough to carry the day mr karge has his work cut out the dominance of the gandhi family as a past center rebuilding of a party which has lost several of the last elections since 2014 the exit of several senior leaders turned rebels like gulam nabi azad jyoti aditya sindhya kapil sibal and perhaps most immediately the tussle for power in rajasthan between the congress chief minister ashok gelot and his challenger sachin pilot as well as the gujarat and himachal pradesh campaign which has seen only priyanka gandhi campaign so far rahul gandhi as today said his priority is his yatra and which will end in january next year after the gujarat and himachal elections i would say tapasya in understanding our people in understanding our land and in understanding myself i am not looking beyond this yatra for me this yatra is important and my entire focus needs to be on this yatra The two candidates are sharp contrasts of each other one flamboyant seen as elitist and daring to contest the congress elections the other a family loyalist backroom strategist and ready to be a presidential candidate at the very last minute after the other gandhi back candidate dropped out in a pointed statement the party's communication in charge mr karge always avoided flamboyance and has been the organization man working in a self effacing manner to advance the collective interests of the congress party mr karge will occupy the post once occupied by stalwarts like mahatma gandhi subhash chandra bose madan mohan malviya and abdul kalam azad before independence since independence there's been a nehru gandhi at the helm for the 42 of the last 75 years does he have what it takes to revive the party's fortune especially in the 2024 elections mr karge's victory was expected but the 1072 votes that tarur polled and the over 400 votes that were rejected are a clear message to the congress party that they need to take certain corrective measures in terms of internal reforms to take the party forward for mr karge he has a task set off as soon as he takes over of not only forming a new steering committee and a plenary session but also holding crucial elections for the congress working committee the cec as well as the parliamentary board with ankit and shrija sunil prabhu ndtv ndtv has accessed multiple fir's and police complaints accusing convicts in the bilkis bano rape case of threatening and harassing witnesses while they were out on parole The 11 men convicted of uh, raping Bilkis Bano and killing her entire family in the 2002 Gujarat riots were freed this Independence Day. These 11 men, rapists and murderers convicted in the Bilkis case, were released early with laddus and garlands on grounds of good behavior when they were in jail or out on parole. But that justification by the Gujarat government is on shaky ground after these FIRs and police complaints accessed by NDTV between 2017 and 2021 at least four witnesses in the Bilkis Bano case registered complaints and FIRs against the convicts while they were out on parole NDTV's investigation reveals and apart from the one FIR and two complaints accessed by NDTV against the convicts there's another FIR against one of the convicts Selish Bhatt for outrading the modesty of a woman shockingly This FIR is part of the Gujarat government's own filings in the Supreme Court. In July 2020, an FIR was registered in Radhikpur police station 
by Sabera Bain Patel, another victim of the Gujarat riots and a witness in the Bilkis Banu case, Pintu Bhai. Against two of the convicts, Radhisham Shah and Mitesh Bhai Bhatt on charges of sexual assault and threats while they were on parole. In January 2021, Mansuri Abdul Majid, another witness, filed a police complaint with Dahod police against another convict, Selesh Bhatt in January, alleging threats from the convict while he was out on parole. In July 2017, two other witnesses, Adam Bhai, Ismail Bhai and Imtiaz Bhai, Yusuf Bhai, filed a complaint against one of the convicts, Govind Nai, again, alleging that the accused made threats of murder. If they didn't agree to compromise, while he was on parole. I have said no, when the government and the concerned people have taken decision, I don't, I don't want to make any comment on that and I don't find anything in wrong in that because it is done as the, per the process of the law. Gujarat elections are around the corner and now with these FIRs and serious complaints against the convicts of Bilkis Bano case while they were out on parole, questions are being raised about the intentions of the Gujarat government and the central government in approving the premature release of the convicts. Whether the Gujarat government goes back in its order, only time will tell. But for now, it has some answering to do. With Tanushri Pandey in Gujarat, Sneha Koshi for NDTV. Religious leader Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh, who was sentenced to 20 years for rape and murder, hosted a virtual satsang event on Wednesday. Among guests, many politicians, including the mayor of Haryana's Karnal, several BJP leaders. Top Haryana BJP leaders at this online sermon by rape and murder convict Dera Sacha Sauda Chief Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh. Days after his release on furlough, cleared by the Manohar Lal Khattar government just ahead of the crucial Panchayat polls, and an assembly by election in the state. Ramnagar me, our Nivasthan hai. Waha, bahut sangha jodi hui hai aapne. Pitaji, aapka aashirwad bana rahe. Ji bata. Aur pehle bhi aap Karnal aaye the. Ram Rahim sect claims to have massive following in Haryana and neighboring states like Punjab and Western UP. This is not the first time he has been released from prison this year. In February this year, he got a three weeks furlough before the Punjab elections. In June, he got a month-long parole just before the Sangrur by-election. In October, he got parole for 40 days before the Adampur by-elections. Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh is currently serving a life term in jail in Haryana's Rotak after his 2017 conviction for raping two women disciples at his ashram in Sirsa, where the Dera Sacha Sauda is headquartered. Last year, the Dera sect head was also convicted along with four others for hatching a conspiracy to kill Dera manager Ranjit Singh in 2002. In 2019, Ram Rahim and three others were also convicted for the murder of a journalist in 2002. But for the Qatar government, politics appears to have taken precedence over propriety. The coming panchayat polls in Haryana will be a test of the government's popularity, especially in rural areas. The Adampur by poll is significant too. BJP leader Kuldeep Bishnoi's son is the party's candidate for the seat. With Alok Pandey, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. The Dera Sacha Sauda chief, who was convicted in 2017, has been granted a 40-day parole last week following an application by his family. Many, of course, are questioning the timing of this, given that it comes just before the Haryana local polls. 
Suella Braverman has quit the UK government on Wednesday, casting more doubt on the survival chances of Prime Minister Liz Truss after her economic agenda has unravelled. Braverman said she'd resigned after using her personal email to send an official document to a colleague. She described it as a technical infringement of uh, government rules, but said she'd made a mistake and accepted responsibility. Within hours of this, Liz Truss's office announced Braverman would be replaced by Grant Shapps, a former transport minister under ex-premier Boris Johnson. Welcome back to Good Morning India. The weather department has issued an alert for a possible cyclone that could develop early next week over the Bay of Bengal. However, the weather department said it was too early to comment on its exact intensity. Saurabh joining us at this point. Saurabh, we're seeing uh, that sat map of uh, uh, the cyclone developing over the Bay of Bengal. What are we hearing at this point and how is it likely to affect uh, the eastern coast? Well, you know, I mean, uh, initially last week, uh, there were reports that, you know, th th that there could be a super cyclone forming in the Bay of Bengal. That was, of course, refuted by the Indian Weather Department and the in or the Indian Meteorological Department. But then on, uh, it has now confirmed that there is a cyclonic formation that's taking place in the Bay of Bengal. Now, as they say, it's too early to decide on the uh, intensity or predict the intensity and, uh, in, and the trajectory of the cyclone if it does form and if it forms then it of course it will be named cyclone Sitrang. but at this point uh, in Odisha of course fishermen have already been uh, uh, alerted to get back into the uh, you know uh, uh, into land by 22nd and not to venture out into the sea predicting that this cyclone is all, in all likelihood uh, at this point which is a low pressure system is in all likelihood likely to develop into a cyclonic storm so that's where it is as of now. And uh, state governments, of course, are making preparations just in case it develops into a cyclone. And there needs to be evacuation and all those measures that are taken before a cyclonic storm hits the coast. So it's wait and watch for now. Saurabh, thanks very much indeed for those details. We will slip into another quick break at this point. Much more coming up. Welcome back. Malika Arjun Kharge, a staunch Gandhi family loyalist, is now the Congress's first non-Gandhi president in 24 years. He succeeded Sonia Gandhi at uh, the Grand Old Party's highest office, but with just 18 months left for the mega battle of 2024, can Mr. Kharge make a difference? Joining me now is senior Congress leader P. Chidambra. Many thanks, sir, for speaking with NDTV. A first question, it's all too good for Rahul Gandhi to say that uh, he will go to the new chief and he will decide his role in the party. But practically, will Malikarjun Kharge really be taking calls without the nod of the Gandhis or is the change only cosmetic? He will. He is a Congress president. And I think you're underestimating the power and authority of the office of Congress president. Of course, he will consult everybody. He will consult senior colleagues. He will consult the past Congress presidents. He will consult younger leaders. He must consult every one of them. And he has made it clear that he will have a very consultative system of taking decisions. And I think um, he will be the boss. He is the boss. He's been elected as the boss and he will be the boss. What changes in the party shall the workers look forward to with a new chief? Oh, okay. I can tell you from my talks with many, many party delegates, including in my own state and district and constituency, they want the process of elections to percolate down to the PCC level, to the DCC level, and most importantly, to the Block Congress Committee level. When this process percolates down, 
and elections are held to these bodies, you will find dozens, hundreds of people joining the party at the block level because now they have the assurance that there will be an election and the election will be an open election. Uh, by and large, 99% free and fair election. They can come and vote and they can vote for the candidate of their choice. Once they have the confidence, you will find that a large number of people will rush to join the Congress party and those who are dormant will uh, revive again and stir themselves and come and work for the Congress party. Hmm. But will Malikarjun Kharge, uh, Mr. Chidambaram, be able to assert authority as the Gandhis do with uh, both leaders and party workers alike? See, this is a perception you have got that Ms. Ms. the Gandhis always asserted their authority. That's not correct. I have worked closely with them. They take decisions, but they also consult everybody. And some decisions are left to others. For example, when I was uh, uh, overseeing Goa, many, many decisions were left to me, and they didn't interfere. And now that there is a formal person holding the post of Congress president, I'm quite sure that the Gandhis will work with him and help him assert his authority. Now, will it be baptism by fire for Malikarjun Kharge in some sense with Gujarat and Himachal polls coming up? And have the Gandhis in some sense found a convenient shield then? The blame will be at uh, Mr. Kharge's doorstep. You can't have it both ways. You can't say the Congress will continue to be the power sector, hmm. uh, power center, and they will distance themselves from the result of the election. Uh, these these are these are these are the standard stereotype uh, comments we hear from the uh, media. Now all of us are responsible for what happens in Gujarat and Karnataka. You are right; it will be a bat baptism of fire because Gujarat and Himachal are only a couple of months away. Karnataka is a little further away, but that's not very far either. Therefore, it will be a baptism by fire. But I'm sure Mr. Karge, when he filed his nomination, knew that the elections were around the corner. Has this election, if nothing, brought the two uh, sides, that is the Congress party and those who were upset with the party and called the G23, uh, many of them have also left the party, but whoever remains out of the G23, have they been brought back into the fold? Because uh, Shashi Tharoor was one such person who was viewed as partly being part of G23. And we've seen some others who signed uh, on the papers for the nomination of Malikarjun Kharge before the elections. Do you think at least the election has brought them together? I've always held that the G23 did not exist. In fact, even on the day their letter to Mrs. Gandhi was leaked to the media, I knew that several of them uh, had signed the letter without intending that it should be sent on that day or without intending that it should be made public. The G23 never existed except in the media. And one by one, everybody took his own path. Uh, Gulam Nabi Azad, who was supposed to be the leader of the G23, uh, found his way out of the Congress party, uh, be that as it may. Now, all that this election has done is it has given confidence to those who were crying for reform that reform will take place. In a huge party like the Congress party, it's not easy to uh, bring about a change. But for the first time, we have demonstrated, yes, we are willing to hold an elections with some imperfections, but we are willing to hold an elections and move forward. Now, that gives confidence to the pro-changers that more change will take place. In fact, I'm not part of the G23, but I'm a pro-changer. I'm pro-reform. I've spelled out the reform measures that are required to be done in the Congress party. And I hope that Kargeji will begin to implement, accept some of them and begin to implement them. He's on record saying that he will implement the Udaipur Declaration. If the Udaipur Declaration is implemented, that will bring about a massive change in the way the Congress Party functions. 
in the run up to the elections uh, mr chidambaram uh, many of the leaders from the congress party uh, actually you know were upset with the fact that despite the fact that the congress is holding elections even though after 22 years for the post of the president there no other party is put through as much scrutiny as the congress party and they cited examples like the bjp saying that they don't hold elections for their uh, own party president or any of the regional parties why do you think the congress party is put through this kind of scrutiny even though it's in the opposition will that work in favor of the party does it show that uh, the country wants a strong opposition and is looking uh, for the congress to provide that i hope you are sp speaking with a mirror in front of you <laughs> you along with others put the congress party through this kind of scrutiny why because we are basically an open democratic party we are not a closed party yes the gandhi family had enormous influence over the congress party for several years but nevertheless even during their time there was not a closed door approach the bjp is completely closed there is not even a ventilator into the bjp and other parties at the state level less said about them the better the congress party is an open party the democratic party dissenting voice ha heard from time to time and therefore you put us through the scrutiny well we are prepared for the scrutiny how many times have i appeared on television to answer questions now i can't think of the bjp fielding somebody to answer questions about the inner working of the bjp we are ready to be scrutinized but my appeal to is please scrutinize some other parties also we have passed the first test with mm. very high flying colors all right mr peter damram may thanks for speaking with ndtv thank you peter damram speaking to ndtv's maha siddiqui dev let's move on religious leader gurmeet ram rahim singh sentenced to 20 years for rape and murder hosted a virtual satsang event among the guests there were several politicians including the mayor of haryana's karnal and other bjp leaders the data sacha sauda chief who was convicted in 2017 was granted a 40 day parole last week just before the haryana local elections top haryana bjp leaders at this online sermon by rape and murder convict dera sacha sauda chief gurmeet ram rahim singh days after his release on furlough cleared by the manohar lal khattar government just ahead of the crucial panchayat polls and an assembly by election in the state ramnagar mein hamara niwas sthan hai wahan bahut sangat judi hui hai aapne pitaji aapka aashirwad bana rahe ji beta aur pehle bhi aap karnal aaye the Ram Rahim sect claims to have massive following in Haryana and neighboring states like Punjab and Western UP. This is not the first time he has been released from prison this year. In February this year, he got a 3 weeks furlough before the Punjab elections. In June, he got a month long parole just before the Sangrur by election. In October, he got parole for 40 days before the Adampur by elections. Mera sachcha soda ke jo Karnal ke administration hai इनके द्वारा मेयर को सीनियर मेयर डिप्टी मेयर को कल जो पैरोल के आने के बाद जो बाबा जी ने अपना जो सत्संग किया था ऑनलाइन सत्संग तो वो कल वहाँ से थे बन्नावट यूपी डेरे से और करनाल में यहाँ कमोपुरा जो हमारा नाम चर्चा कर रहा है उसमें हुआ था ये नहीं ऐसा मुझे मालूम नहीं है ये जो सारी कार्रवाई की जाती है पैरोल देने की ये जेल विभाग द्वारा की जाती है और उन्हीं के पास डिटेल्ड जानकारी होती है किस आधार पर दी गई है और क्यों दी गई है आई डू नॉट नो आई हैव नथिंग टू डू विद दिस गुरमीत राम रहीम सिंह इज करेंटली सर्विंग अ लाइफ टर्म इन जेल इन हरियाणा रोहतक आफ्टर हिज ट्वेंटी सेवनटीन कन्विक्शन फॉर रेपिंग टू वेमेन डिसाइपल एट हिज आश्रम इन सिरसा वेद देरा सच सौदा इज हेड क्वार्टर्ड Last year the Dera sect head was also convicted along with four others for hatching a conspiracy to kill Dera manager Ranjit Singh in 2002. In 2019 Ram Rahim and three others were also convicted for the murder of a journalist in 2002. But for the Khattar government politics appears to have taken precedence over propriety. The coming panchayat polls in Haryana will be a test of the government's popularity especially in rural areas. 
The Adampur Baipol is significant too. BJP leader Kuldeep Bishnoi's son is the party's candidate for the seat. With Alok Pandey, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. The rupee closed below 83 to the dollar for the first time and was at a record low with the dollar at its highest level since 2000. Let's take a look at how much the dollar has appreciated since the 1st of January. Well, it's about 6% against the euro, 11% against the rupee and about 22% against the yen with the Asian currencies really suffering. Against the pound, 20% against the yuan, 14% and against the Brazilian real, about minus 5%. Weakening currency versus the dollar is making it uh, harder to fi fight inflation. On an average, 10% uh, dollar appreciation adds to about 1% inflation as per the International Monetary Fund's calculations. Meanwhile, the UK uh, inflation rate has crossed 10% amid chaos uh, following what is being seen as Liz Truss's flips and flops on her economic agenda, Eurozone inflation currently at 9.9%. UN Secretary General has had some strong words on human rights and protecting minorities on his first day in India. In Mumbai, he visited the Taj Hotel in memory of those who died in the 26-11 terror att attacks. He was there on a day China blocked another move by India and the US to sanction a Lashkar terrorist, Shahid Mahmood. The United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on a two-day visit to India. Starting his first visit to the country in his second term, Guterres came with some critical advice for the world's largest democracy and also currently a member of the United Nations Security Council. As an elected member of the Human Rights Council, India has a responsibility to shape global human rights and to protect and promote the rights of all individuals, including members of minority communities. While making sharp observations on human rights, Guterres also highlighted the need for condemning hate speech unequivocally. He also stressed on the need for robust institutions, including protecting journalists for a well-functional democracy. His comments coming within 12 hours of Sana Irshad Mattu from Jammu and Kashmir being stopped from flying out of the country for the second time since last year. She was to receive the prestigious Pulitzer Prize for Journalism. By condemning hate speech unequivocally, by protecting the rights and freedoms of journalists, human rights activists, students and academics, and by ensuring the continued independence of India's judiciary, this is the India that the world has celebrated. And I urge Indians to be vigilant and to increase your investments in an inclusive, pluralistic, diverse community and society. The United Nations Secretary General started his visit by paying tributes to the victims of the 2611 terror attack at the Taj Mahal Hotel in Mumbai. This even as in New York, China once again blocked an India-US proposal at the UN to list lashkar e taibas Shahid Mahmood as global terrorist. Mahmood has been a long-standing senior LET member based in Karachi and has been affiliated with the group since 2007. The same terror outfit that carried out the dastardly 26-11 terror attack in Mumbai. Bureau Report, NDTV. Russia's President Putin has declared martial law in four regions which Moscow recently annexed from Ukraine. President Putin didn't immediately spell out what steps would be taken under this new martial law, but said his order would be effective in Donetsk, Kherson, Luhansk and Zaporizhia from today. His decree gives law enforcement agencies three days to submit specific proposals and order the creation of territorial defense forces in these four annexed regions. Time for a very quick break. Coming up next, an exclusive interview with Booker Prize winner Shehan Karuna Tilaka, who has won for his novel The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida. I spoke to him earlier.